Good evening. I'm Rodney Rogers, president of Bowling Green State University, and I'm here with uh, my wife and uh, colleague to uh, talk with you, to share with you some news about our Office of Parent, Family, and New Student Connections. Um, before we get there, I just want to tell you we are having a beautiful winter evening in Bowling Green, Ohio. And we have quite a bit of snow here already, but the snow is coming down tonight. And I know uh, that we have uh, individuals all over the country, perhaps all over the world, that are joining us today. Uh, parents and, and, and families of, of current students here at Bowling Green. We might even have a few current students with us. But the goal tonight is uh, to provide you more information about some of the uh, current services that we're providing and the ways in which we want to connect with, with families and, and parents and friends that are supporting the students of Bowling Green State University. We also want to talk a little bit about some of the ideas going forward that we have for this office and, and the possibilities. And so we ask you uh, to... to Share with us your ideas. Share with your, us your advice. Uh, share with us uh, questions. There'll be an opportunity for some questions as well. Um, so you can do that in two ways. The event thread, um, you can certainly add your comments there. We'll be monitoring those sorts of questions. Or uh, sending an email to families at bgsu.edu. Families at bgsu.edu, and we'll also pick up your questions there. So, good evening. You know, it was 338 days ago in uh, March 9th when Governor DeWine here in the state of Ohio declared a state of emergency because of COVID-19. And during these last 338 days, I think each of us have dealt with challenges that this global pandemic has, has uh, brought to us in a, in a variety of ways. And we hope uh, to each of you and, and your family, we hope you have found a way forward and, and uh, have found support in the community as we've worked our way through this global pandemic. And, and during this global pandemic, I think more than ever, we've realized the importance of community, the importance of people coming together, supporting each other, finding a way forward. And I, I hope you'll remember that at Bowling Green, one of our guiding principles is about community. It is about belonging. And we talk a lot about how do you create a community where each member of this community has an opportunity to belong. And, and belonging has, uh, is an opportunity, but there's a responsibility. It's a responsibility to support others, to respect others, to listen, to learn from each other. That is the power of a powerful learning community, a, a place where all belong. But we also found out during this um, last 338 days that there were some things here at Bowling Green that we thought we could do better. We, we um, started communicating a lot more with, with parents and families and, and realized some of those uh, programming that we had there and the way in which we would communicate with uh, the families and parents didn't work as well as we thought it was working. And so we tried to, to learn a lot. Um, obviously, we had weekly emails. Uh, we certainly did some live events where we're communicating with families and, and students about the planning that we did last spring and into the summer and clearly this fall as we uh, opened, certainly, and, and uh, provided students opportunities to be face-to-face as well as, as online and remote where appropriate. And, and I, I know, you know, not everything was perfect, absolutely. We, we constantly are working at ways of getting better and better. But during all of this, we, we kind of realized the importance of making sure that we are uh, not only thinking about the physical community right here at Bowling Green and at our here on campus at the Firelands College, but that the community extends beyond families, friends, parents of the, of the students. How do we make sure that that community is also uh, brought into what we're working on here at Bowling Green is making sure that we have a powerful learning community that is strong, a place to belong, but gives students truly an opportunity to stand out and find their purpose and passion and ultimately, ultimately 
the absolute goal is to make sure every one of our graduates are prepared to go out and do amazing things and go far. And so part of thinking through all of that came up an opportunity to create an office that brought together a lot of different programming that we were doing here at Bowling Green, but it was in some different areas of the university. And so the thought was we, are, we, we need to bring things together into a single office. So we're going to talk more about kind of some of the programming that will be done in this new office led by our new colleague here. But before we get to that, I want to uh, introduce uh, my wife, uh, Sandy Earle. Um, you know, when Sandy and I um, had the opportunity uh, to uh, step into this role as um, uh, president at, at Bowling Green State University, uh, one of the most exciting things we had was uh, a, a commitment together to make sure that we continued to create uh, a community. And, and so I'm just uh, so uh, pleased and honored and obviously uh, very fortunate to have a wonderful spouse and wife who um, also is so committed to Bowling Green State University and the, com and the community. And so I've asked Sandy to join us tonight. Um, both she and I are, are try to be around campus as much as possible. Uh, because uh, we certainly view this as an important community in each of our students to support them in ways that we can. So Sandy, I'll turn it over to you for a few moments. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity to put on lipstick for the first time in quite a while, although I think it may have already worn off. We're so glad you've joined us. Thank you for taking time out of your, your evening to um, learn about this new office. Rodney and I talk a lot about belonging and how important it is and it seems I think when you say belonging sometimes it seems easy I don't think it's an easy thing but I do think it's essential for people to feel like they can contribute and grow and especially students um, as they come here they're leaving you know what they've always known for 17 18 years of their lives and they're joining us here in this family and what could be more important than making sure that you're there as part of our family as well to support them and making sure that they feel like they belong here so that they can have the best foundation to grow and be who they want to be in the future. We became acutely aware of this. Both of us have been very um, lucky to have careers in higher ed and get to, as I say, I get to work with smart, uh, motivated people. Um, so really it's a, it's a joy. Um, and we also have the opportunity to have wonderful boys, twin boys, that just graduated from college. And so we were on both sides of the fence with this and seeing how important it is to them as college students to have this great sense that they belong and that they matter. Because each of them had a different experience and we just feel like this is the most important foundation. And, but we need you, you as their family to help us to build that. And with this new office, we feel like it'll be uh, just a great addition to uh, helping all of, each of the students feel like they belong here. It's, it's essential for the best things to happen here. So thank you for the time. That's it. And uh, thank you, Sandy, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight, and you'll hear more from her in a, in a little bit. Um, but uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, our newest colleague um, that, that is leading the Office of Parent, Family, and New Student Connection. So Amy Swank. Um, Amy joins us from Gonzaga University, um, where she led a very similar office, actually founded a very similar office, and led that office uh, at uh, Gonzaga for uh, nearly 10 years. And, and as we were um, working to establish this office, you know, we, we looked around the country to see wh what, where those great programs were that really engaged uh, families and, and, um, and parents and, and friends in the life of the institution and in the educational experience of the students. And um, Gonzaga University just kept coming up. People kept saying, you know, you should talk to this woman named Amy Swank. Um, and so an opportunity uh, arrived here at Bowling Green where 
where we had a chance to uh, interview and go through all those processes, but we're very pleased that uh, Amy and, and her husband Richard decided to join us here at Bowling Green Sta State University. And so we're very pleased that uh, Amy uh, Swank has joined us as a executive director of the Office of Parent, Family, and New Student Connections. And so um, I'm going to kind of turn it over to her now to talk a little bit about uh, the current programming that is going on in this office and then uh, some of her hopes and aspirations as we continue to move forward. So a little bit about the current portfolio and what you can expect from this office in terms of supporting families and, and parents, but also about where we're going with this office. And so, Amy, I turn it over to you. Thank you, President Rogers and Dr. Earl. I am honored to be a part of um, the Bowling Green State University community and truly feel privileged to be able to serve parents and families here. Uh, a little bit about myself, I have dedicated my entire career to education in, in many different forms and I was lucky enough to spend the last 14 years at Gonzaga and then um, create the Office of Parent and Family Engagement. Um, I have been able to also serve at the national level and just recently ended my presidency for um, the National Association that serves um, colleagues in the field of family engagement. I really um, think it's important that I share a little bit of my why. I'm a first generation college student and actually the first in my family to graduate. Um, so, much, uh, so much of my family and my experience in college was very challenging for them. They didn't understand how to fill out a FAFSA form or um, re really even what that was. And so I think when I do this work and I get to serve families, I really think about who they are and what they needed and what kind of an advocate and communication that they would have needed to be able to support me so that I could have been successful. And um, I imagine that that's the relationship that I'll get to have with many of the families here. We really are focusing this work on connecting, educating, and advocating for the entire Falcon family. And we really see this as families of origin and families of choice. When we think about belonging, it really is about the entire Falcon family belonging to our community. And um, that might be guardians or supporters or grandparents or siblings. And so you'll see that um, in the work that we're doing, the communications we're creating and the programming that we'll offer you so that we can really engage and you can all be a part of our community. Um, we've, we've just launched the office. You may have already seen some really great work that we're doing. We have um, created a very robust um, website we are working on launching the newsletter in a couple of weeks. We're going to have office hours so that both President Rogers and myself can have office hours with the families at BGSU. And um, we will be creating publications. We are going to have some great events, some that we, we will for sure keep some structure. I've heard that bingo during family weekend is very popular, so there will be no changes to bingo, I can assure you of that. Um, but um, we do have a, a plan on creating an entire Future Falcon track for younger siblings to be able to participate in Family Weekend in ways that they haven't. Traditionally, we have some big surprises at the football game, we're hoping, um, to be able to also incorporate Future Falcons. Um, but I'll hold a little bit of that back so we can unveil that in the future. But we really are wanting to create some great opportunities to be able to educate you so that you can be those supporters for your student. We know that when you're involved in your student's um, collegiate experience, they're more successful and they graduate on time. And we all want that. So um, I, I, that's a little bit about where we're at. I think we can take some questions, but I'm really excited about serving all of you and look forward to rolling out many of the initiatives and events that we've been working on. Great. Thank you, Amy, and welcome to Bowling Green again. It's great to have you here, of course. Um, so the um, you know, pres uh, uh, families at bgsu.edu for any questions that you might have or in the event thread. So we've got a, a, a few, few questions here. So the, the new student connection part, uh, name of the office, tell me a little bit more about the programming that for new students, what's that all about? So 
there's a natural opportunity for family members in their transition to being a high school uh, family to become a collegiate family. And so it made a lot of sense for our new students and our families to come together in this office, that we would really serve all families and all new students um, from the beginning of their VG experience. And, and I think that there's a lot of synergies and opportunities to think about that transition for both. Although the transition to a collegiate family will be a little bit different and your, ro your role will change. Um, most definitely, I, I oftentimes say, you'll go from an everyday manager to a little bit of a, spe spe a spectator. Um, where your student will really be immersed um, in, in the BG experience. And, um, but they will also be experiencing some transition that is similar. So it just, it made so much sense that we'd bring them together and that many of the themes that our students experience in their first year, we want to be able to give our families the toolkit to be able to support them through that first year of transition and, and beyond. But we recognize that that's a vital um, opportunity and a, and um, during that uh, period, we really wanna make sure that we support our new students and families so that they can be successful and, and they'll stay and, and we'll get to watch them celebrate graduation. Great. So we had a question about it. So as a, as a family of a student, how can we assist and encourage them during this challenging time of hybrid remote instruction and, and perhaps limited interaction with peers? So. What are some of the things, uh, advice that you might have? And I'm, I'm going to turn to Sandy mm -hmm. and ask her a little bit on, on some advice that she might have as well. So I think um, this is for families, you're experiencing something that we've never experienced. And, and, and much of that, too, is a loss of um, some of those moments with your student. When I think about graduations or a, do, uh, a drama performance or musical production. And so I wanna recognize that this has been really difficult and um, recognize the loss that we're all feeling. Um, so I would say as, as families, um, the best way to continue to encourage them in, in, and they'll have to stretch themselves in ways probably um, that we've never imagined, but there's great opportunities on campus. There's an entire webpage, um, can, uh, BGSU backslash campus activities. There's virtual roommate opportunities. There's um, lots of virtual um, experiences with Falcons After Dark. Min many of the programs that we offer when we are, we are in person are also offered virtually and in person with uh, obviously COVID guidelines. And so I, would, I, I think it's really important and I know it's challenging because it's so much easier to um, you know, just sit and maybe watch another show on Netflix. But I would say, encourage your student to be involved, really stretch themselves, connect as deeply as they can with the community, continue with the, the, the friends and, and, and the connections they have made at the institution, continue, continue to connect and engage as much as possible. We know that it's important um, for their mental health and well-being and, and, and their success at BGSU. Great. Thank you for that. And so, um, Sandy, so as a, as a faculty member, could you give a, from a faculty member's perspective, what, what advice would you give um, a, a family member of, a, of a, a student that might be in one of your classes on what they can do to an, assist and encourage or advice that you might uh, ask them to pass on to the student to be successful in your classes? Well, that is a tough one because I often... Uh, recommend to students that they talk to other students because other students are excellent guides to help each other and work together to get through things and it's much easier to turn to your your classmate um, in non-COVID times and uh, get help from them and connect with them and go down and work through a problem on a whiteboard together. So I guess I usually recommend to my students that they do that same thing, but they do it, you know, remotely. So you can get out a whiteboard on your computer, but do that same connection. Do fun things together. If you can go for a walk outside being safe, but even though it's cold, it's beautiful out and get outside, get some some uh, fresh air and be with people as much as you can, not in a very safe way, of course, we don't want to be spreading the virus, 
Um, but get to be with people as much as you can, whether it's online or safely distanced outside. Um, when the weather turns, we can do more of that, I hope. Um, but you can do most of the things that you do in class. It's just harder. Um, and maybe to even host some fun things with people you don't know, um, which is very brave, by the way, very courageous. But the, the university offers things for you to do that, that you can just jump in and meet people with Falcons After Dark or some of the other activities that Amy was um, referring to. I think that's essential. Um, that would be essential for me as a student um, because you're in one of the most social times of your lives when you really want to meet new people and it's, it's, there's certainly a lot of barriers, but you can get by them and I think there are plenty of opportunities for that. Um, as far as studies though, um, I would as much as possible still find study buddies, find people to talk through problems with as much as possible even though it's a little bit harder. And you can ask, um, get, join a professional group um, for whatever uh, major you're in and meet people that way because they're all like-minded, have taken the same classes and can help you. Um, that would be my advice, I guess. Thank you. You know, and, and um, you know, never, I guess I, I'll just add along that I, I think, you know, encouraging your student to um, make those connections with faculty members, the yeah. office hours, you know, faculty, you know, we all love talking about our subject area and, and striking up conversations. And it may be a Zoom call, it may be via email, but, but, um, but we also have, you know, some face-to-face -face opportunities as well. But I think just the importance of, of um, making that connection with a, with a faculty member that may be teaching the class. So we got a couple more questions coming in. Uh, one is, so college can be overwhelming for my student. How can I support my students from uh, states away? As you know, we have students coming from all over the United States and all over the, the world. But, but uh, how, you know, being over, you know, it could be overwhelming coming to a, a university. Maybe it's a first year student and, and the family is two, three, four states away. Advice. What could this office do to help support those students or what advice might you have, Amy? That is a great question and it's somewhat relatable in my own personal experience. Uh, our oldest is a junior in high school and um, we moved across the country from Washington State and they've, had, they've stayed in their high school and they're doing their high school completely remote. And I've watched her struggle and her, her, what, what she's known in her home for the last nearly 17 years is 1,700 miles away. And so some of the ways that I've encouraged her is staying connected um, with, with home. Um, and so I, I would say FaceTime, send some love in the mail, snail mail. Uh, cards, probably uh, cards. Any any time that you can have a connection with your student, even even with the miles apart, uh, I'll I'll share that um, a, a couple years ago, a former student of mine, she she loved pickles, and so her mom would send homemade pickles from home. So if there's a favorite food that's obviously easily packaged, um, uh, having some some clear guidelines on some check-in time, I think. It's important to have a little extra check-in and, and being able to send a little piece of home um, to your student and keep encouraging them to do um, all those things and continue to connect with their peers here um, and try to be engaged with the, the campus community as much as possible will really help them be successful here. Thank you. So uh, another question is, um, there was, you, you referenced earlier the the newsletter, the office's newsletter. Can you give us a, a sense of what, when, when that rolls out, what, what are your plans for that newsletter and what will be included and what's your goal for the newsletter, those sorts of things? That is such a great question and I, it will be a key tool um, in your toolkit. So we hope to have it out in the next two weeks and really 
the folks that will be writing the newsletter articles are going to be the experts in those key areas. So I'm not going to write about financial aid, and I probably shouldn't, <laughs> but our colleagues will. And, and what we're, we, how we'll use it is, I've already started to keep track of themes. I, I've looked at them on our social media platforms. I, I think I'm getting a sense for some of the questions that you need answers to. And that will evolve as we continue to build this robust tool for you. We'll, we are going to plan that we'll try to give articles two to three weeks, maybe even a month before we think that you'll need that information to be able to su successfully guide your student to whatever it is that they're needing assistance on. Maybe I'm already, so next year during January, we need to include a lot of articles around housing so that you can, success, so you can help your students successfully navigate um, the housing process at BGSU. And we'll continue um, to, to include financial aid. Dining has been an important um, uh, question and, and uh, topic and theme recently. And so we know that the health and well-being of your student, which includes eating uh, food and, and, and all of those important basic needs, we'll make sure that we include that in the, the newsletter. We will try to use this tool to ensure that we always give you the information before you need it so that if your student comes to you with questions or needs support, you can be that advocate and that coach, and we like to say that guide from the side. Great, and so uh, I wanna follow up on uh, the last uh, statement that you made, the guide from the side. So a little bit of, um, and I meant to ask this earlier, your philosophy about this office. So what are some guiding principles or overall philosophy that, that you wish to bring to this office moving forward? Well, um, obviously in my previous experience as well as what we want to create is a partnership with all of our families at BGSU. And we really, we know that you know your student better than anyone. And so you're our best point of contact to be able to support them. So what does a partnership look like? And um, we also know that your student, this is your student's experience. So how do we give you tools so that you can guide and support your student from the side, but that this is obviously not your experience? Um, I often joke that we're not, we're not probably gonna build any dining halls or residence halls for family members anytime soon. <laughs> but um, uh, in all seriousness, we realize that you are the, the best guide to your student and you will help them be successful and inside and outside the classroom. And we really, we really wanna lean on you in that partnership and our job is to give you the tools so that you can do that. Um, Cause we all, we, want, we all wanna see our students graduate and be successful. All right, thank you. So this is for Sandy. Uh, advice to parents for first generation college students and in the context of as, as a mom and as a faculty member. So advice that you have for parents for first generation college students. Wow, that's a great question and a really important one. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know these stats right off the top of my head, but the most important thing I think that you should go into this is knowing that you are not alone. We have a lot of first generation uh, college students here at BGSU. Does anybody know the numbers? Anyway. It's a lot and you are not alone. So do not feel like you are different in any way. We are here to, we're excited that you're here and excited that you made this choice. And as parents, um, I think it's really helpful to make sure that you are, to try to encourage your student to make a connection with someone at the university, whether it's a faculty member or a staff person that kind of knows, knows what's going on. Um, we have a whole office that works toward helping first-generation college students. And there's lots of programming for first-generation college students. So I would encourage that my student to get into those groups and, and they're gonna be giving information and have, they have social things too, I think, um, so that you feel, again, like you belong. You are important, an important part of this university and we have offices to support that. And as a parent, we have a great parent page. We have other parents that you can meet and, 
and uh, bounce questions off of and, and talk about you know, things that you may be concerned about or worried that maybe you don't, since you haven't done this yourself, that you don't maybe know everything you need to know. And you can always, add, I'm sure Amy's office will be definitely there to, to support you as well as other um, folks. And it may be a faculty member, an advisor, but I would, I would suggest that the student try to connect with somebody at the university that can, can, can answer those questions that pop up and make them feel, I guess, very um, knowledgeable and secure in what they're doing here. Does, it, does anybody else have other advice for that? Um, I think the most That's important true. thing is that you are not alone and we are here to help. We, mm -hmm. we know you're here and we are here to help. Great. Both parents and kids mm -hmm. and students, I should say. So, Dr. Earl, I think it's a third of our students are first generation. Thank you. So, I didn't know the, date, the stats on that, but I knew it was a lot. I, I'm learning a lot of things here in my first few months. So, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, we we had a couple of follow up questions about the newsletter as well, and so families will automatically get it. Um, we we are working. We know that there's a couple of families that are still not quite working on, uh, not quite receiving all the emails. We have, a, we have a fix in place, so know that that is coming, but you will receive the, if, you're, if your student has um, added you to their BGSU um, portal, then you will automatically get the newsletter, um, and, if, and if you want to opt out, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that there's an option for you to be able to opt out of that. Uh, I do want to transition us to fall of um, 2021. We know that families are anxious to hear about our plans as we proceed forward during this time of COVID-19. And so um, President Rogers, can you share with us a, a message around um, for our parents and families around fall 2021? I can do that. In fact, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to do that, absolutely. So we have learned a lot over this uh, last 338 days as, as we uh, you know, pivoted fully remote in the spring and then online in the summer. And then this fall semester was a combination of remote and hybrid and online. And now spring term, uh, we've, we've also had uh, remote face-to-face, -face, some face-to-face uh, -face required because of certain labs and, and a variety of things. And, and here's kind of what, what we have learned. You know, as a university and, and as a place that prides itself as, as a strong learning community, each of us are learning different ways to interact, different ways to teach, different ways that the learning is occurring. And, and I'm, I can't tell you how proud I am of the faculty and staff of Bowling Green State University that have been innovating and creating and, and, and constantly trying to get better. Um, and, but here's what we also know, that students overwhelmingly have a preference for face-to-face, -face, and that's based upon surveys that we've done as, as well as, as demand for certain courses that are the face-to-face -face and hybrid and others. So, so we know there is a very strong and robust demand for a face-to-face -face experience. But we've also learned that there is also a group of students that we want to be able to provide the flexibility of some online and remote classes where perhaps they could be off doing an internship, a co-op, and they can still pick up some courses or because of maybe just their own um, situation and having some flexibility in certain courses, whereas other courses they want to be face-to-face. -face. So as we have gone through this, we have worked to challenge each other, our, our deans, our, our faculty, our, uh, our staff, and our chairs and directors, to think about what have we learned this past year? How do we find, you know, things that worked well, how do we keep those sorts of things that are, that are helping engage students and, and, and it's enhancing the learning process? But what are those things that we absolutely need to, to get back to, if you will? the the face to face sort of experience that is is very important in this educational process. And so our plan for fall 21 is to be back better than ever before. So we're not just going to flip it back to, you know, how it was before COVID, but our plan and this is assuming 
uh, vaccines are available uh, for all and that, that the public health uh, this region has been, you know, is being managed appropriately. But, it, but assuming those sorts of things, and I, I think there's reason to be very hopeful that both of those will occur, but our orientation, planning orientation right now for fall 21 is to be back in a uh, very high intensity face-to-face opportunity. They, there still will probably be some physical distancing and some face coverings potentially. We'll see where that goes. But from a scheduling standpoint in terms of the courses, we've really challenged each other here across our university to make sure that curriculum that we are delivering fall 21 has lots of face-to-face -face opportunities because we know that is what students are choosing. That is what students want. And as a campus like a Bowling Green State University, we also know that what goes on in the classroom and the learning that occurs in that classroom is absolutely core and vital. But we also know, and it's been mentioned a few times tonight, the learning that goes on among students and between each other, uh, that is so important as well. And so making sure that we also have robust student life programming, that we have robust programming going on in the res halls, those are the plans that we are making. But what we don't want to do is slip back into exactly how things were before COVID-19. I think there are things that we have learned that we can make that educational experience even better for our students. And so our plan for fall 21 is to be a, um, uh, the, the curriculum will be delivered in face-to-face -face experiences. And there again, I put the caveat, this is assuming vaccinations are available to all that uh, want those and that the, the public health where we are on the public health is, is uh, appropriate. And our chief health officer, Ben Beatty, who continues to lead all of our health and wellness initiatives across the university, is a key partner in helping us do that planning. But uh, I'm very excited to get back to making sure that we have an educational experience for each of our students, where that community of belonging can be uh, a part of this, uh, can, can be face to face. But there's all those opportunities to stand out. There will be more opportunities because of the ways in which we can leverage technology in my mind. Because we've learned that we can have people zoom in from all over the world. Um, uh, Nobel Prize winners can engage with our students. Um, uh, amazing artists can engage with our students. Uh, as well as this face-to-face -face experience that, that we also deliver. So I'm very excited about fall 21. Our orientation is to be in place and uh, be back uh, better than ever. Let's see, did I answer that question? You sure did. And I have a, a, a somewhat of a follow-up question and I, I feel um, privileged because I've been at two different institutions during this COVID year. So I got to see how COVID played out on two different campuses and they were very similar. And I recognize that um, some changes happened and changes for the better. So what changes did you make at BGSU during COVID that made BGSU better? And how will you maintain those changes as we shift back into um, a different experience? Thank you. And, and um, so, you know, the, the, the best individuals to answer that question, quite honest, honestly, is our faculty and staff. And so um, what I can share with you is some anecdotal sort of stories that I've heard from, uh, from our colleagues, uh, faculty and staff, about some of the things that, that they have tried and, and that have worked kind of well. And um, I'll name one, office hours. I, I had a faculty member the other day tell me, you know, I am going to make sure that I have virtual office hours as well as face-to-face -face office hours going forward. We're, whenever I have office hours, it's going to be both virtual and face-to-face -face at the same time. Because what I've discovered is a lot more students will tune in for virtual office hours. And they may not have specific questions, but they're listening in 
to other questions that a student is asking and, and they may then drop off and then come back on after they, they tried to figure out was that helpful or not. Um, so uh, that's one example of, of, I think, of how technology can help leverage um, uh, to, to further engage our students. Uh, I've had another faculty member tell me a little bit about, um, it, it was a, a, a large lecture class that had some small breakout sections, but the large lecture um, might get flipped in the fall. So, so that large lecture might be up in the cloud somewhere. And so class time then becomes smaller groups of students working on projects, working on case studies perhaps, or, or discussing ideas. And so the learning, the classroom becomes a place of, of discussing ideas and learning and, and the more one-way communication of knowledge, maybe that's up in the cloud and that, that is part of the homework is to listen to that lecture. But when you come to that class, there's an opportunity to truly engage. Um, there's another example, I think, of, of uh, innovation. You know, we've also tested out a thing called uh, the BGSU Sync where, uh, and, and, and some faculty have uh, liked this a great deal, others not so much, quite honestly, but, but there's a group of faculty that have been using the sync rooms where some students are face-to-face, -face, some students are virtual. There again, for certain students who may be doing an internship or a co-op or, or perhaps um, you know, they needed to, you know, needed to be home for a week to maybe take care of someone at, at home, they can continue to have a connection with that class and still attend the class. So, so that's another innovation that, that I think we will still see in a post-COVID world. But um, those are ways, and then um, let me add one more, more from the student life, student affairs area. Some of the programming that is, is done there, they, they, kind of that virtual roommate program, other ways that we've learned how to connect students virtually, we can use the technology to make those connections and then reinforce that in, into the face-to-face -face sort of experience. Um, we've also, you know, uh, the winter wonderland. Uh, that's a thing that, that may be a new tradition at Bowling Green. When we came back in spring term in front of University Hall, we had some lights up, put an ice rink out there, a lot of outdoor activities. Uh, that seemed to be very popular with the students. You know, that is something else that, that we're starting to learn how to use the outdoors, um, even in the winter. Uh, when, um, although, you know, I love snow and I love cold, so, uh, you know, I like being outside. But we've found ways to use outdoor activities to reinforce um, the activities that, that, that students can do and, and, and be involved in. So those are a, a few, few examples that I might have. Now, let's see, there was another question for Amy that I didn't quite get. Oh, so more about SOAR. So um, Amy, tell us a little bit, uh, the new student connections piece, part of that includes uh, the orientation. Mm -hmm. and, and you know many of our parents perhaps attended a SOAR in the past. If you're a parent of a, a mm -hmm. current student, if you're a parent of an incoming student, you'll have your SOAR experience this summer. But tell us a little bit more about some of your planning for the summer orientation and registration programming. Well, I think SOAR will be very different. And if you're a returning family, it, it will look um, completely different. And, and we're very excited about that. So um, we have created, our team has created an online orientation experience. And I would say that's, that's been something that a silver lining with COVID, an opportunity to be able to orient our families and our students earlier than ever. And a lot of um, the, the basic questions or that basic understanding of the institution will be a part of the online orientation, as well as starting to acclimate and connect with others at the institution, both um, the professional staff and faculty and programming, as well as fellow students, and, and, and that we'll be able to orient and transition through a longer period of time. 
that when you arrive at SOAR, we, we don't plan on moving you all around and, and there won't be several session, sessions for you to attend. We want to be intentional about the in-person time, about deeply connecting and making sure students and families feel that community of belonging when they um, attend their SOAR event. That's, that's um, the reason behind that is we know that if we, if we connect our students and our families really deeply early on, even before they arrive or while they're first coming into uh, the community, that they will stay, they will retain and they will graduate. And so there's a lot of intentionality about changing SOAR to a, uh, an online orientation experience, then a belonging and a community building experience, and really then going into their academics and their um, fall welcome and move in and continuing to deepen that connection with um, both our students and families uh, for a longer period of time and make it more digestible um, so that you can get to know the community better and at a, at a more reasonable pace. So we're really looking forward to that and uh, we think that our returning families and students will really enjoy this new experience we have set forward. And, and I think that's another example of, of ways in which we've learned how to use technology that, that makes SOAR a better experience. So there's certain aspects of SOAR that will be up on the, in the cloud, uh, and then there's other aspects that absolutely need to be in a face-to-face -face experience. And that reminds me of another comment uh, that a faculty member shared with me that kind of gets back to another uh, previous question, which was, um, when I, when I asked uh, this group of faculty, you know, what, what have you learned uh, during this COVID? The one said, you know, I've learned how precious class time is. That, that in a post-COVID world, I am going to make sure that, that when we're together with these students, that we're using uh, all the precious time of that class to, to talk about ideas, to connect with each other, and to learn from each other. And, and so... Uh, you know, I, I think about my own personal learning is, is, you know, there's some of this interaction that we've all taken for granted and, and it's been taken away from us in different ways. And so how we make sure that we don't forget if, if anything positive can come out of this uh, COVID-19 is the importance of human interaction, the opportunity to learn from each other. And, and engage with each other. And so I, I think there, there'll be a, a, a renewed sense of the importance of having discussions with each other to challenge each other's and, and our ideas and, and to truly get to know others. Um, okay, but here's a, a question that came in. Sorry, I got off on a tangent there. Um, so if I am worried about my student, and it's not an emergency, but if I'm worried about my student, how can Amy's office help? What, what, what would you say? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at home in another state, let's say, or another part of Ohio, and, and I'm kind of worried about my student. How, how can your office help? We, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to create a toolkit for you. We talked about the newsletter being one of those tools in the toolkit. An additional tool in the toolkit is a refer form for students of concern. And like, uh, like mentioned, it, this is not an emergency contact form. We wanna make note that if, there, if you are concerned about uh, the health and safety of your student, you should call BG police or campus police. But if this is a non-emergency, we understand that the collegiate experience, students hit some bumps and as I mentioned earlier, we also understand that you, your student will oftentimes turn to you and you will be a great advocate for them and a great partner to the institution. This form is a simple questionnaire. It basically asks for some general contact information and then goes on um, so that you can fill out what your concern is. Our office takes those in. They will be answered within 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes our office will be able to triage um, the concern and be able to um, assist. Other times we will look to our colleagues. If it's in the academic affairs area, we'll look to our colleagues to be able to support um, that concern. We will not stop um, or just pass it off. Our goal is to make sure that we, we come full circle and we close the loop with you. And that 
that if additional challenges or um, bumps in the road happen as we start to navigate this, we want to be able to continue to be able to see those through and to be able to support you so you can support your student, so your students can be successful. We hope that this tool um, becomes a great way to connect with the university. I want to also say, we, we please call us, email us, um, if there's other concerns or you just are uncertain about something. And I, I, I've often shared with families, because you know your students so well, that if, if you have that feeling that something isn't okay, that's probably when you need to connect with our office or connect with us to, through the student refer form um, because there is probably something that needs to be addressed or support needs to be put in place. And so um, we hope that you'll, you'll use that tool um, if you need it and just know that our office is always available for any, anything that you might need as you navigate this collegiate experience as a family um, to help your students be successful. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, there's another question. Uh, so my student is struggling financially due to COVID-19. How can the university help? Um, so, so I'll respond, um, before I respond a little bit about some of the um, federal stimulus packages that we know um, were available last spring and then certainly in December and now what uh, Congress is debating as we speak, um, that does have some uh, emergency grant uh, funds in, in that area. But before I talk about that, um, just want to make sure everyone's aware of the emergency um, fund program we have here at the university that is uh, supported by the contributions of, of alumni and friends of the institution. Um, when this started in, in the spring, uh, we did a call to our uh, alumni base and to the friends and, and philanthropists that have supported the university over the years to ask if they would support uh, and, and reinforce the student emergency fund. And, and I, I can tell you how, um, just how overwhelmed we were by the support of the family and friends and, and donors to the institution who, who provided funding for this student emergency fund. And, and we've re needed to replenish that certainly during these last 338 days. And, and those uh, donations continue to roll in. So there's that program. And, and your office would make some connections uh, to make sure that, that, that people know where to apply for that, mm -hmm. correct? Absolutely. And, and so I would say um, if you are filling out the form on our website in the left navigation is where you can locate this um, student refer form. If that's your concern, we absolutely are working very closely with the Dean of Students Office to be able to help with that emergency fund. And then also the food pantry as well is another uh, uh, option for supporting um, our students. So please let us know and we'll make that connection. And as I had mentioned, uh, in the CARES Act, which was the act passed in the, in the spring, late spring of last year, you know, there was a student emergency fund that uh, here at Bowling Green we distributed uh, in, in the uh, spring and then some in the summer, also in, in the fall as well. Uh, and then uh, the act that was passed in December also provided some uh, emergency student now, those funds haven't been released to uh, uh, the university at this point, but there is a component of those funds that are specifically for student emergency. And so as we get more guidance from the Department of Education at the federal level, uh, it's very important that we follow all these guidelines, of course, to make sure that we're, we're um, doing what uh, the law requires us to do. But there are funds uh, also there that we will be working to make available for our students um, for emergency need that have been uh, negatively impacted by COVID-19. We're not quite there yet because, first of all, the money has not been distributed and we don't have kind of final uh, ruling on, on certain uh, words in the law to make sure that we are following and um, you know following all the all the rules as as we should but i think that will also be an, another source but in the short term what is absolutely available today is that student emergency fund so i would encourage um, your student 
to apply for those emergency uh, funds in the short term and then longer term uh, there may be some additional um, aid av available for uh, current students who've been negatively impacted by COVID-19 financially. So we are uh, really to the end of our hour. We said um, we, we wanted to spend about an hour with you and we want to thank um, those that uh, tuned in. And, and so I'm going to ask uh, my wife, Sandy, to make a few uh, closing comments and we'll have Amy say a few closing comments and and uh, we'll, we'll wrap things up. So, Sandy. Well, thank you so much again for joining us and taking time out of your evening to learn more about this new important office. Um, we do not uh, take lightly the responsibility that you have entrusted your student here at BGSU. And as a mom, uh, to me, it's really so important that we make sure that each student feels like they belong and that they're part of things and that they can hit the ground running. And I'm so excited to see what Amy's going to do to uh, make that even better here for our students. So each and every one of uh, our students and families are part of this big Falcon family where we're all growing and learning together. Again, thank you for your time and thank you for entrusting your student uh, with us here at BGSU. I just want to echo the gratitude to our Falcon families. And I haven't been able to meet many of you yet, but I look forward to creating a lasting relationship with all of you um, through our services and events and toolkit that we'll provide you. Um, I'll just say that um, please stay connected. Know that our social media channels, um, the newsletter, our website, are designed to really be able to give you um, all the tools that you'll need to support your student. And we are trying to really provide a lot of those activities. We know that there are some um, unique challenges right now. So we are posting as much as we can about everything that's happening on campus that also has virtual options so that we can connect your student more deeply to the university. And so stay connected, um, call us, email us, use the student referral form. We really um, are looking forward to working with all of you and supporting you um, so you can support your Falcon. Great, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Sandy. And uh, thank you both for joining us. And to each of you, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, you know, I think as, as we think about these last uh, 338 days, um, we have learned a lot together. Um, the other thing we've learned is, is uh, how to be adaptable, how to be flexible. And, um, and so I want to thank you, the, the families, the, the parents, for your flexibility and adaptability. Uh, we certainly understand there were times over this last year where there was some unknown, you know, we, we've always tried to be as transparent and, and open about, you know, what our planning is and, and those sorts of things. But I just so appreciate, and I think all of us so appreciate your understanding, your, your, your flexibility, your adaptability as, as we've tried to work our way through what is a, a, a very challenging situation for all of us in a variety of different ways. But as, but as families and, and as parents of BGSU students, we so appreciate your understanding and, and flexibility and adaptability. Now, I also want to say that, you know, during this uh, past uh, year, you know, at, at Bowling Green, we have, have tried very hard to find a way forward. We believe higher education and education in, in general is an essential part of society. And so, uh, and we know that there's a group of students who wanted face-to-face, -face, but we also knew there were some students who needed to be uh, remote. And so w we tried to make sure that we had a way in which we could try to meet the needs of all of our students because each of our students are so important. And I can't tell you how proud I am of the students at Bowling Green State University and all the rules and the protocols and the procedures that they have followed that allowed us to have a, relatively speaking, a very safe campus so far as we've worked our way through. And the important part is as we continue through spring term is that we don't 
you know, give up on the policy, these procedures and processes. We're going to keep opening certain things up as we've learned more. Uh, we had a very good past week in terms of a very low count in terms of active COVID cases across this campus. And that is because uh, our students, our, our staff, our faculty ha have done such a great job of working together to find a way forward. And so to each of our members of our community, I want to say thank you. Um, thank you for making a difference. Thank you for allowing Bowling Green State University to continue to deliver a great education for our students. And as we say at Bowling Green, I Ziggy Zumba. Have a great evening.